Okay, uh, pleasure to be here today, and uh, thanks for the invitation. Congratulations to the organizers, and especially for the elected officials. I know you have so much to do and so many pressures on you, so I really appreciate you coming here, and uh, for your interest in transforming Los Angeles County and showing what can be done. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about health. Now, now, just to pretend that says didn't bike, right? Um, so. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been studying and advocating for physical activity for a long time and uh, done a lot of different things. And, and I think creating, uh, what I'm uh, learning is that you have to create places that attract people to be active for recreation and for transportation. And so that's, that's what I wanna, wanna talk about. But, you know, uh, physical activity is, um, kind of, it's something that's mom and apple pie. Oh yes, exercise is good for you. What most people don't know is that in this country, f physical inactivity is the fourth leading cause of death. And the WHO, World Health Organization, says that physical inactivity worldwide is also the fourth leading cause of death. Above uh, dietary factors, above alcohol use, above, you know, crash, traffic crashes and all that sort of thing. This is one of the leading um, uh, health challenges that we have today. So we need to take it seriously. And creating more bike-friendly communities is a way of taking it seriously and help reducing uh, this problem. So. Um, this, this problem gets a little more attention, um, the, the, the problem that we have in obesity, um, so, uh, which of course is connected to physical activity. And since many of you are not health people, um, it, it, it may be useful to see the, the ec epidemic in action in the United States. So if you look at the, the 1990 map of the U.S., the light blue um, states have less than 10% obesity. Uh, 1999, no more light blue left. Um, uh, 2009, no more dark, uh, only one dark blue and uh, three new colors added. So we're up to the southern, uh, many of the southern states having above 25% obesity. Um, when you count Overweight and obesity in this country, it's two-thirds of adults. It's, it's one-third of, of children and adolescents, all right? So this is a big issue. And how are we going to deal with this issue? Um, um, uh, provide surgery for two-thirds of the people in the country? Anybody, anybody want to pony up for that? I, I hope not. Um, we're going to solve it through better diet, and more physical activity. The most boring thing you can ever say on TV, you know, that is, is, okay, you need to eat better and, and be more active. You know, uh, the TV people will just dismiss that. Oh, we all know that. That's too boring. You know, we want something new and fresh and exciting. Well, sometimes the truth is not new. Uh, the truth is, is old. Um, so, but it's a big issue. We need to deal with it. Why do we need to deal with it? It's breaking our country. Why, wh what is driving the federal deficit? Healthcare cost, Medicare and Medicaid. One third of the increase in Medicare and Medicaid is from obesity. One third of the increase. So this is not fringe stuff. This is central to all the, the um, the, the partisan debates that we have going on. How are we gonna deal with the deficit? Well, one thing that nobody talks about is, how about let's pe get people healthier? Let's make people healthier. We'll, we'll improve health, we'll improve our economy, we'll improve um, uh, uh, clean air, we'll do so many good things, all right? Why aren't we prioritizing that? That's our job. We can rise up and say we are going to prioritize that. In our cities in L.A. County, we're going to look towards the future. Obesity costs are about 10% of medical spending. Physical inactivity costs are 4 to 6% uh, of health care spending. And uh, so why don't we get to this? What does this have to do with transportation and bicycling? Um, uh, and we'll get to that in a second, I guess, because I want to show you the physical activity story. Um, uh, for the first time, 
um, we have data on how much physical activity people actually do on a national sample. Um, they put uh, uh, electronic devices called accelerometers on a sample of people all around the country. And this is what we found with children. This is what we found with children. The, the recommendation is kids should be active at least 60 minutes a day. And if you look at the data on 6 to 11 year olds, elementary school kids, in the best case, fewer than half of boys are, are meeting that guideline. A third of girls are meeting that guideline. And then when you get to middle school and high school, 10% or less of kids, of adolescents, are physically active enough. When you, uh, when you look at adults, um, the guideline is 30 minutes a day. So I want to make sure you get your 30 minutes a day um, before, during, or after you're eating your fruits and vegetables. All right, it doesn't, doesn't matter, Get it, do them both. Um, uh, we're, we're getting three to five percent meeting physical activity guidelines. So we have, we have a truly an epidemic of physical inactivity in this country. And, um, and why is that? It's because we have, uh, for the past 200 years, we have been on a physical activity extermination campaign. And it has been extraordinarily successful. What is, what is the Industrial Revolution? It was about creating, saving labor, creating labor-saving devices. We, uh, we, we drive around in them. We have, through our transportation um, investments, we have eliminated physical activity from transportation virtually. We are on our way through mechanization and computerization to eliminating physical activity and occupations. Um, we uh, uh, seduce people into entertaining themselves with devices and TV and, uh, and movies. Well, people used to walk around and do stuff. Um, so we have eliminated physical activity from every part of our lives to now uh, we're at the point where uh, it's, it's killing us as much, uh, just about as much as anything else. So uh, big issue. Um, how are we doing in improving it? This is leisure time physical activity based on self-reports uh, that uh, Centers for Disease Control tracks. This ends at 2000 because they, they changed the data then. Uh, from 2000 to now, it's about the same. So you're getting 20% 20, 20 of people saying they, they meet guidelines for physical activity. Probably half of them are lying. We know that. Uh, um, but they're not lying anymore, all right? It's, 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 it's bad. So, but this turns out to be the good news because over the past couple of decades, physical activity for transportation started out low in the 60s when they started measuring it and has gone down 50%. From 10% to 5% of trips. This is walking and biking. So we're, we're, we're really, you know, at a, at a point where we need to do something serious. Um, but it's do something serious from my point of view, to help people have fun. You just heard the mayor of Long Beach talked about how much he enjoys going out and biking. Most people that go out and bike like it, enjoy it, if, if, and I'll show you data on this soon, um, they're not scared to death of traffic, okay? Um, and we want kids to go out and play in parks more, and we want people walking around and talking to their neighbors and enjoying the outdoors. And, and so, but it's going to take serious work to get us there. So, okay, so what does transportation have to do with all this health business? I, I want to give a lot of credit to John Pooker for this. He's a, a transportation uh, planner and researcher uh, based in Rutgers, done really uh, the, the best, I think, research on uh, the bicycling. And, and look at this slide. Um, the, the green is the percent of people uh, walking, biking, and using transit for transportation. And you can see who's bringing up the rear on active transportation. It's the U.S. The red line is the, the percent obesity in, in the country. And you can see who's out in front on that one. It's us. And look at, the, look at the differences across countries. And, uh, you know, uh, obesity goes from uh, 25% uh, down to about, you know, 5 to 10% across countries. Um, active transport goes from the low in the U.S. of 5% up to over 50% in some of the uh, European countries. Now, I'm a scientist, and I'm not going to tell you that 
you know, this is cause and effect. But how much do you want to bet that it isn't cause and effect? <laughs> All right. Uh, it might be prudent to, uh, to think about this. Uh, John's uh, uh, other, other uh, uh, st- uh, more recent study um, looked at health effects and the number of adults in each state who walk and cycle. So this is correlations across states. So walking and cycling, correlation with meeting physical activity guidelines, 0.72. Huge, enormous. Um, Percent obesity, very big, and percent diabetic, very big. He, he, he did the same analyses with uh, 47 of the biggest cities, found the same effects. All right, so this is within the United States. We can see an extremely strong relationship between active transportation and some of the, the driving health problems. And uh, here's, a, here's an interesting one. Um, uh, uh, a, a study uh, published last year, uh, a national study, um, and on the left are women who increase bicycling and uh, across, uh, uh, you know, about uh, 15 years. And you can see the more they increased, um, the more weight they lost. And on the right is people who decreased bicycling. The more they decreased their bicycling, the more weight they gained. All right. So those of you who are, you know, tired of paying out, out the nose for your Jenny Craig meals and this sort of thing, here's, here's something free you can do. If you've already got a bicycle, this is free. Okay, so we know how to create different kind of congestion. We can design a place to, that promotes walking and biking. We've decided not to do that. We have, uh, or we can create a place that, uh, uh, that creates uh, car congestion. So I'm, I'm, uh, Andy has told you a lot of, uh, a lot, what a lot of cities are doing. I'm, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of data here. Um, we have to go back to Portland because they've done such a good job over such a period of time. And um, a, a, a transportation planner there, I just want to show you this. Um, she put GPS devices on cyclists who commuted to work. And, um, and so uh, w- that GPS told her what roads they took to go to work. And, and then they classified those roads into those with bicycle facilities and those without. And what they found was that they did about half and half. Half on the roads with bicycle facilities, half of their miles without. But then when you look at the, the overall road miles, only 8% of the road miles have protected space for bicyclists. So on those 8% of the road miles, they did 50% of their riding. And why is that? It's because the number one um, reason um, that's driving people's choice of routes is avoiding traffic. And so the more those facilities protected people from traffic, the more they used them. And women riders were even more sensitive. Women riders didn't, were not impressed with how much uh, a, a paint stripe protected them from traffic. But if, if there was a physical protection, if there was something off-road, if there was a bicycle boulevard with very, very little traffic, the women preferentially use those. So as Andy said, we're marketing to people who are afraid to ride now. We want to make them comfortable and and have them find it attractive. Um, uh, I want to give you just a couple of examples to build on uh, some of the uh, things that Andy said. I want to tell you about Udense, Denmark. Let's just look at a a couple of the things they did. They wanted to be the cycling city of Denmark, and so they uh, uh, they made these special right turn lanes for, for bicyclists. Uh, this is kind of my favorite. Um, uh, on the left there is kind of um, uh, a speed camera for bicyclists. Not to give you a ticket, but just to show you how fast you're going. And, uh, and um, the one on the right, I love this one because it counts bicyclists every day that pass this point. And they have uh, 15 or 20 of these around the city. And so it makes bicyclists, it kind of celebrates you. Yay, we got another one. You know, makes bicycling normal instead of, get off the road, this is my road. Right? So I think that's nice. And so, so what happens there is that in a place with already a lot of bicycling, they increased bicycling 20% and decreased injuries 20%. I want to give you a couple of other examples. Nobody mentioned Bogota. Bogota, Colombia puts us to shame 
in promoting bicycling and walking. And you think, oh, I, I've heard of Bogota. Isn't that drugs and, and violence and stuff? Uh, you go to Bogota, you're going to learn a lot about how to, how to create an activity-friendly city. And, and you see a lot of places like this. This is truly a complete street. It's designed to make, make life uh, comfortable and pleasant for bicyclists and pedestrians, but cars can also use it too. So it's a, a really, they've invested a lot in walking and biking. Um, uh, this is Brisbane, Australia. Look at that gorgeous bridge that's now an icon in the city, bikes and pedestrians only. They have a separate bike and pedestrian uh, uh, facilities all along their rivers. Uh, I, I like people to think big, to think big. Who would have ever thought that you needed a multi-level bicycle parking garage? <laughs> but that's what this is. In Amsterdam, at the train station, and, and look at it, you can't find parking there. How did that happen? How did that happen? But even more relevant for us in California, let's look at the, the cities that started out near the bottom with 1% or less uh, biking. And over time, all of these have increased, right? So this can be done. It's not one thing, it's a whole package that Andy was talking about. And all of these cities did much more than one thing. And I, I, I want to end because I'm talking to some elected officials here and everything uh, rightly or wrongly, comes down to money. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go to to Portland once again, and I want to show you this uh, study that was just published uh, uh, this year. And so the um, uh, the solid line is in Portland's investments in bicycling infrastructure. All right. So they they've been increasing since '91, and we're we're here about 2010. And then the bottom line with the with the triangles. That's how much money they've saved in healthcare cost and, and fuel. And so you see, it, it, it's a, it's a, uh, they've saved. It hasn't been a cost, it's been a, a net savings uh, in that region. And, uh, they, and so based on that, they said, what we're doing is working. We're going to dramatically increase our investments. And you see, that's how the, where the line is going up in the future. And they projected they're going to increase their savings as well. Okay, up until a certain time, and it's hard to project, you know, up to 2030. But this is something that makes economic sense. Um, and um, uh, one other similar thing, they estimated what's the, what's the cost benefit of putting, uh, putting in sidewalks? This was in Madison, Wisconsin. Paid off four to one, all right, Save health care savings. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there, and I just invite you to come to our Active Living Research uh, website for lots and lots of relevant materials, and thank you so much.